the cemetery that you'll see right next door to the Dallas Convention Center. And good evening, everyone. I'm Bill Ratley. And I'm Lisa Gibbons. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I know this is a rather strange place to start our show tonight, <laughs> but it has a lot to do with our second story. First of all, in most cities, a cemetery is not the major tourist attraction, wouldn't you say? No, but they're all very historical. Oh, indeed. And this cemetery here really gives you a sense of the people who started this great city. And it's been around lots longer than the convention center or some of the other flashy new buildings in and Dallas. And new buildings that are going up right now. Well, tonight in our second story, we're going to take you to one of the major tourist attractions in the country. It's the National Cemetery in Arlington. And you're going to find out about the men who guard it. And we're going to travel up to Teaselville, Texas. Now, if you don't know where that is, it's near Tyler. And we'll meet some businessmen there who are trying to challenge the hold that Goodyear has on the blunt business. And in our PM departments tonight, Chef Tao prepares an unusual and refreshing soup. Dr. Jim Wasco has a body quiz that should clear up the confusion about cholesterol. And Linda Harris tells us how we can make foreign visitors feel at home. But right now, let's travel up to Teaselville and find out about those businessmen who think the blimp business is booming. age of airships has come and gone, aviation experts say. This once majestic breed of flying machine is now all but extinct. So what's this strange silvery object doing cruising through the skies of Texas? Well, it's the brainchild of a bunch of mighty serious businessmen who are working very hard to build the world's first bargain blimp. We started following this story way back in February, and the trail led us here, to tiny Teaselville, Texas, which if you're looking on a map is just southwest of Tyler. Now there's not a whole lot here except a little general store, but the regulars pointed the way to another place just down the road, a big clearing in the trees, and a very strange looking building. What we found was a huge hangar, a large but very limp gas bag and a luxury carload of Texas oil men, all planning to strike it rich in a brand new business just right for these inflationary times. Well, we were sitting in the coffee shop one day, Tony, and as usual, uh, we were talking about, you know, how we can make some money, where is the good oil prospect, is anybody got a hot drilling boom going? And uh, we just bought a, a new hot air balloon, and we're talking about that, and about the feasibility of, you know, we, we make a little money with our balloons. We do some advertising with them occasionally. It's sort of a sideline. Nobody gets rich with it, but you can make a little money with it. And uh, we start talking about a blimp, and Tony whips out his pen. It's that pen. <laughs> and got a napkin and started figuring, and here we are. The company conceived during that coffee shop conversation soon had a name. United States Airships Incorporated and a chief engineer a retired Navy aviator named Carl Steffen. Then co-owners Tony Howard, Bill Coleman, and Fred McCown went searching for a suitable airship. And they had to go all the way to Australia to find it, a little one-man blimp that formerly flew to promote the fortunes of Ardath cigarettes. The ship was built by a tobacco company, built for a tobacco company to advertise their product. and. Uh, the Australian, one of the Australian networks made a documentary about the airship. And uh, the name of the cigarettes, of course, was on the side of the airship. And when the documentary was shown, uh, they wound up in some legal troubles because it's against a lot of advertised cigarettes on television there as it is here. And consequently, they disposed of the ship. We were able to obtain it. our pioneers were face to face with their first major problem. Seems their little airship had left a lot of her airworthiness back home in Australia. The 22,000 cubic foot bag wouldn't hold helium. And with gas going for more than $1,000 a blimp load, even a slow seepage could very well deflate the whole project. So Carl pumped her up with plain old air and went looking for leaks. Well, the first thing we thought of was soap bubbles and we covered the whole ship with soap bubbles. Uh, went over it minutely looking for any bubbles coming out, and we found four or five <coughs> leaks that way. 
uh, and uh, thought, well, we had arrived. But then when I ran tests with air in it for a couple of days, I discovered things are still leaking. So okay, the final effort else. was to How take a, a floodlight down? on the outside, and on uh, one person down. would get inside the balloon, the person with a floodlight outside, uh, and the person inside would watch for the little stars twinkling uh, in the floodlight. And uh, that turned out to be a feasible method. And we think we now have all our leaks discovered. What this ship is, is a test experimental ship. And the idea is to use it for engineering purposes and uh, use the data we have from this to build another ship, a, uh, a larger one, one uh, more feasible for advertising, more feasible in terms of the weight capabilities and what have you. Uh, the other ship uh, is the key. This is just the beginning. So that's how we left them last winter, full of high hopes and some might say inflated dreams. We'll give you a call when we're ready to... to Teaselville to watch pilot Stan Palmer take the little blimp up on her first official flight. Clear. Her builders see this as the first in a whole fleet of baby blimps that may soon be buzzing over the landscape, bearing advertising blurbs of every sort. And they're already thinking about other applications, like patrolling offshore drilling platforms or tracking whales off the California coast. In fact, no idea seems too far-fetched. Everybody laughs. Uh, the first thing is to laugh. Uh, but uh, we may be the last, or like Liberace, you know? <laughs> he, he laughed all the way to the bank. Uh, it may be that way with us. Yeah, we hope so. The maiden landing was a bit bumpy, but everyone seemed more than happy with the way the little airship handled. Now Carl and his crew can begin designing their next blimp, one that will carry a Made in Texas tag. They figure other airship operators have had the skies to themselves long enough. Here in Teaselville, 1980 will be remembered as a very good year.